Oliver Twist, based on the novel by Charles Dickens and illustrated by Barry Ablett. Chapter 4. New Friends. Oliver ran and ran until he came to a signpost. I'll walk to London, he decided. Perhaps I can make a better life for myself there. He walked ten miles a day. At night he hid in hay barns and woke each morning aching and weak with hunger. The nights were worst, because there was nothing around him but darkness and loneliness. At last he reached the city. His sore feet were bleeding and his clothes were worn to shreds. He watched people jostling around market stalls and shops, so busy that no one noticed him. He collapsed on a cold doorstep, too exhausted to beg. Delicious smells floated by from a bakery. Oliver staggered up to the window, where shelves were groaned with piles of freshly made bread, cakes, buns and pies. He stared at them longingly. A boy about the same age, with sharp eyes and a swaggering walk, strolled over. Hungry? he asked. Very, gasped Oliver. To Oliver's astonishment, the boy pulled a wad of money out of his pocket. I'll get you something. Wait here. The boy returned with a bag crammed with hot meat pies. I'm Dodger, said the boy, as Oliver gobbled the food. You? Oliver Twist. Go to bed tonight, Oliver? No. Got any family? No one at all. I know a kind gentleman who'll take you in. He won't want any rent either. That's generous, exclaimed Oliver. He followed Dodger down a maze of narrow alleys where foul smells filled the air and swarms of ragged urchins played in slimy, oozing gutters. Men and women staggered around, cursing loudly. It looked so dirty, Oliver almost wished he hadn't come. But he had nowhere else to go. Finally, they reached a crumbling house. Dodger led him up a rickety staircase to a dark room. Through a cloud of sizzling fumes, Oliver spied a gnarled old man. He was wearing a grubby blue coat and frying sausages over the fire. Behind him, a group of boys danced and dodged, playing a game. The old man's coat had lots of pockets stuffed with hankies, wallets and pens and the boys were trying to pull them out without him noticing. Hey, Faggin! yelled Dodger. This is Oliver. Hello, Oliver. Faggin bared his teeth in a leering grin. Want to play? Yes, sir, said Oliver politely. He waited until Faggin bent over the frying pan, crept up and delicately drew out a hanky. You're a natural, chuckled Faggin. Come near the fire. Have a sausage. Another man stepped in, smearing the back of his dirty hand across his mouth. With him were a girl and a snarling dog with a scratched, torn face. Ah, Bill Sykes, drawled Faggin. Delighted to see you. What can I do for you and Nancy? Give Bill's eye supper. Bill growled, kicking his dog. And get me a drink. Get to work, boys, Faggin ordered. One found a bone for the dog, while Dodger gave Nancy a half-full jug of gin. She emptied it into a brimming mug and passed it to Bill. Bill's scary, Oliver thought, snuggling under his blanket that night. But I'm lucky to have found new friends. The next morning, waking in the pale half-light of dawn, Oliver saw Faggin open a chest and run his hands over necklaces, sparkling rings and shining gold coins. Faggin turned to face Oliver's gaze. He thrust the chest back under the floor, seized the knife and pressed the blade into Oliver's neck. What did you see? he hissed. Nothing, stammered Oliver, terrified. Good boy, said Faggin, letting go. Keep quiet, 
or you'll be sorry. That's all I have to keep. Me in my old age. Do what you're told, Oliver, if you want to be happy here. A few days later, Fagin told Oliver to go out to Dodger. They stopped by a bookshop which had a stall outside in the street. A richly dressed gentleman had picked up a book from the stall and was reading it as hard as if he was in his study. See him? asked Dodger. Prime target. Stick by me. With one slick move, Dodger pulled a wallet from the gentleman's coat pocket. In that moment, Oliver saw what his new friends were. Thieves.